Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Geography Explained Online. What the hell is that? Hi guys, and welcome back for another term. A little term bit four. Break. Yeah, a little bit of a break for school holidays. We hope you enjoyed that, but we're getting right stuck in with a new year 12 cohort. Term four is my favorite term. Yeah, getting ready for HSC as well. New HSC group, yeah, welcome aboard. Make sure you're studying HSC students. It's a birthday. Room. It's a birthday. It's very exciting. You'll all do well this year. So today we've got a skill that we've actually already done, but we're kind of just taking it to the next level and looking at a really common HSC question. So we're working with scale. So we've done scale plenty. We should know what scales are, should know how they work, but there's a very common HSC question that gets asked. You get four maps, four sources on the broadsheet, and you get asked, what's the biggest scale or what's the smallest scale? And you have to compare the four maps to figure it out. Seems really easy and kind of is really easy if you remember how to do it, but gets done wrong a lot. So this whole video is to basically not make that one mistake, get yourself an extra mark in HSC. All you need to do is remember pretty much two things. We're going to teach you two ways to do this. And as long as you remember those, it's actually a really easy question. Good way to get ahead of the competition to make sure you know small and large scale. Definitely. We'll show you a demonstration and then Mr. Cizio is going to look at a broadsheet with you from a past HSC. Get excited. Let's look at scale. Okay, guys, we're here with you to show you the two rules you need to know We're to not understand. here with them, we're here with us to um, show them. Yeah. It's all right. Sorry, we'll keep going. Uh, to show you the two rules you need to know to understand large scale, small scale. The first rule, Mr. Sizio. Big scale, big detail. Big voice. That was big quite voice. a yell. Small scale, small detail. It's a radio voice. It is. <laughs> so, big scale, big detail. Big Big scale, big detail, small scale, small detail means if you have a very detailed map, like think of a road map or a street map, which is what we used to have before GPS was invented. If you were trying to get around town, you would want a map with streets and houses and individual buildings and where the traffic lights are and stuff like that. You would need a super detailed map of the town to get around. That map has a lot of detail, therefore, a big detail, big scale. It's a very large scale map. However, if I, you wanted to get around town, or if you wanted to get from one side of the city to the other, and you asked me for a map and I gave you a map of the earth the size of a postcard, then you just look at me like I was a moron, because that's of no help to anyone, right? You wouldn't even be able to find what country you're supposed to be in. Exactly. So the reason that would be completely useless to you is because the scale is very, very small, the detail is very, very small, right? You can see some countries and that's it. Can't see streets, can't see states, can't see cities. No use to you if you're trying to use it as a map. So if we're trying to remember this, I always get my students to write large scale, large detail, small scale, small detail. Great study tip if you're starting out HSC. Put this in a poster, chuck it up in your room, chuck it somewhere in the house so you see it constantly. And then you, over time, you'll just um, you'll know this little saying off by heart. And write it in larger scale as you can. Ah, and small scale. So the second way we can do it is by looking at the ratio scale. So something like this, one to 100,000 or one to 100. And this is where it becomes, for some people, a little counterintuitive because it's kind of opposite. Not kind of opposite, it is opposite. So the exact opposite one might say. If we have a large number in our ratio scale on the right-hand side, like 1 is to 100,000, that actually means it's a small scale. So it's only small detail. If you get 1 is to 100 and the right-hand side is a smaller number, you're actually working with a larger scale because this is going to show you much more detail on your map. To think of it like this, Imagine you had a map of the school that was the same size as the school. It would be perfectly detailed. You could see every desk and every chair. If it was a one, it was the exact same size, it'd be a one to one scale, right? One centimeter on the map is one centimeter in reality. Imagine my world map on the size of a postcard, one centimeter on the map, that might be you know all of Australia. So the scale would be one centimeter on the map equals, well, many, 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 many centimetres on Probably not in, in that many. Probably not, you can see where I'm going with this. What we're going to show you now is scale, a little bit scale. of a demonstration using a table, and we're going to show you how as the number gets bigger, our scale actually gets smaller. All right, let's go and do that. Okay, so we're going to do a demonstration now. <laughs> Leave my high to flask alone. Okay, we're going to do a demonstration now, and what we're doing is creating a map of this table here. So if I wanted to create a map of this table, this would never happen in the real world, but I'm going to get a piece of paper that's the exact same size. I'm going to put it on, and that's going to be my first map. And it's exactly the same size as the table. So every one centimetre on this map is the same as one centimetre of the table. 
It's a pretty it's detailed a, map of the table. Very detailed, one to one. What I'm going to do now though is, is I'm going to fold it in half and you'll see that the map's gotten smaller. But we need to fit all of the detail of the table, so much detail of that table, so we need to fit all, that and, all yeah. of that detail onto this smaller map. So to do that, our detail is going to have to get smaller and we end up with a scale of one to two. However, because the detail is smaller, small detail, small scale, this is a smaller scale map than my one-to-one -one map. We could go smaller again though, even smaller detail, we could fold it in half again. So we fold it in half again, we've now gone one is to four. Every one centimeter on this map is four centimeters of my table, but we've had to make the detail smaller again. So what we notice with our two rules, small detail, small scale, but the smaller the scale, the larger this number on the right hand side gets. We should try and do it more than seven times and see if we can fold a bit of paper. Off you go. One to eight. One to eight. One to 16. One to 16. Yeah. One to 32. One to 32. One to sixty-four. One to sixty-four. Go again. <laughs> All right, let's go check out a broadsheet. Okay, so here we are, guys. We've got a 2018 Vancouver broadsheet from the um, prelim exam. Uh, we have a question, which is, which is the biggest scale of the following four? We have source A, map of Canada. Uh, map D, another map of the Can Canadian West Coast. Uh, Source M, which is uh, basically a topographic map of uh, Vancouver, and source R, which is basically a street map. So the question is, which one of these is the biggest scale? So first we can basically just eyeball it and have a look. We know our rule, which is big scale, big detail, all right? So which one of these is the most detailed? Well, the first one here we've got what can we see? We've got Canada, we've got Vancouver as a dot. If we're going to use this map to try and get around Vancouver, it's going to be completely useless to us. We can see, you know, hundreds of kilometres of the Canadian West Coast. Maybe not that one. Let's compare it to this one. Again, we've got the entire Canadian West Coast. The cities are basically just dots. We don't really have any detail here to speak of. Let's flip over. Our topographic map. This is starting to look a bit more promising. All of a sudden, we've got some streets. We can see lakes and rivers, and we can see mountains and contour lines and stuff like that. So obviously this one is far more detailed than the last two. So, so far, this is gonna be our biggest scale because it's got the most detail. Let's look over at source R though. When you look at source R, again, it's it's streets and stuff, but it's it's far more zoomed in, if you like. It's There's there's more obviously more detail here. You can probably see individual buildings if they had put them on the map. So therefore, we all need to really compare is this map here to that map there, and we can see this one's more zoomed in, this one's got more detail, there's bridges and stuff that you can't see in the other one. Source R is going to be the most detailed, the most zoomed in, and therefore it's the one with the biggest scale, okay? But let's just have one more quick look at the maps on the front. These two maps here, you can't really eyeball just to see which one is more detailed and which one isn't. They're both of the west coast of Canada and they're kind of hard to figure out which one is which. They both look quite a similar scale. If the question was, which one of these maps has the smallest scale, we might not be able to just look at it and know just, just by eyeballing it, so we need to measure something. So what we need to do is find a um, similar feature, right? We need to find the same feature on both maps and compare how big they are. So we've got this island of Vancouver here, right? We've got it on this map. We've also got it on that map. That and that are the same island. So we get out a ruler. Thank you to the person who gave me that. Um, and we see that the island on this map is about two centimeters long, all right? We go down to this other map and we compare the exact same island from the same two points is three centimeters long. So it's a third bigger here, which means it's more zoomed in. This one has the more detail which means the one with the smaller scale has to be that one. The smaller measurement equals the smallest detail, therefore the smallest scale. Thanks guys for watching. Um, hopefully you understand a little bit better now how to tell the difference between large scale maps and small scale maps. Just drill it into yourself. Just repeat over and over again. Big scale, big detail, big scale, big detail. That's all you have to do.
Yep, make sure you do a few practices. And if you're at home getting ready for the HSC, make sure you're doing lots of broadsheets to prepare. Um, we'll see you next week, guys. Yeah, remember? We'll figure out another skill, but we'll, yeah. Yeah, we'll figure it out sometime in the week. But yeah. Remember to uh, save the turtles, guys.